Time now for our KSAT Q&A, and we have a lot to talk about in terms of the coronavirus. Joining us this evening is Dr. Ruth Berggren from the Long School of Medicine at UT Health. As always, thank you, Dr. Berggren, for joining us. I want to get right to talking about these hospitalization numbers. Um, earlier in the day, the statistic we saw was something like 87 percent full across the city. What can you tell us about the current capacity and where we're headed? Right. So we've been seeing an increase of 10 percent per day for quite a while now. And at that rate, you know, you double every seven days. And um, we thought that our capacity for COVID patients was going to be about 1,400. And then we'd be um, needing to do extraordinary measures such as open up beds that we don't usually use or even go to other sites. And we are just about at capacity right now because of the increase in 10% per day. We are trying to use the brick and mortar hospitals that we have as the places to care for people, but it's requiring that we do things like use pediatric intensive care units for adults, use post-surgical care areas uh, as ICUs, and use rehabilitation wards for regular patients to make more room for the COVID patients. That's what's going on right now. And doctor, the other big thing that came out today, uh, Governor Greg Abbott uh, changing his mind on masks. He's now making them mandatory in all counties that have at least 20 positive COVID-19 cases. A big change for the governor. Your reaction to that and then your message to folks who still are politicizing this and deciding that they don't need to wear a mask. Your message to them. I think this is a wonderful move. Congratulations, Governor Abbott. Thank you so much. This is what we need. People respond to leadership and we need leadership in this area. I'm actually part of a large coalition of doctors in Texas. And uh, last weekend, uh, a group of us representing 8,000 doctors from the American College of Physicians joined with another 11,000 physicians from North Texas signing a letter to Governor Abbott asking for mandatory masking. So I'm not sure if that's exactly what he was responding to, but people should know that your doctors think this is a really good idea and we did ask our governor to do this. So let's get on it and let's wear the mask. Touching really quickly on testing, I think by now we all know or probably know of someone who has tested positive in our lives. Um, who should be getting a test? Um, can you talk to us about, you know, there's still being a shortage. Um, people are still having a hard time getting those tests. Who should be the ones going out and getting them? First and foremost, it's people with the symptoms that you've heard about, particularly anybody with a fever over 100 or the cough um, and the body aches that you've been hearing about. But in addition, people who have been exposed to somebody else that is known to have COVID may need to get that test to understand what they should be doing. But if you do, if you go get a test because of an exposure, the best time to get the test is either when you have the symptoms or you've reached the eighth day after the exposure. And that may seem a little weird to people, but it's based on data that show that your best chance of having that test be a true positive or not being a false negative is on the eighth day after your exposure. And just sticking with testing here real quick, uh, we've seen a lot of people here locally getting tested as we've seen the cases skyrocket. I tried to go uh, two weeks ago on a Saturday to a walk-up place and the line was seriously about a half mile long. What concerns do you have when it comes to testing capacity? Well, you know, first of all, when you're in a long line like that, remember the social distancing. The vast majority, I think, of people going to get tested nowadays are people who have symptoms. So if you're there and there's a line, you know, make sure you've got your mask on and, and you're staying far apart. That's my first concern. Um, secondarily is um, we have increased our testing capacity in this city. I don't think that that's going to be our main problem. My concern is whether we make use of the information. So I want to remind everybody that if they get a phone call from 210-207 prefix, that is probably a contact tracer who's calling you up either because you're positive or you've been exposed to somebody who's positive and they've got really important information for you or they need information from you. So my concern about testing is once you have the information, do the right thing and communicate it to others. Be proactive, certainly. Thank you so much, Dr. Berger, and we hope to talk to you again during the night beat tonight at 10. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back.